Well, you can probably see I'm kind of cheating again today. I'll stop here, and I'm doing a doing a bike hike and bivy on top of a Munro, which I can just see over here. And I'm coming up this wonderful glen, the glen of the Weeping or the Weeping Glen, which is now filled with this reservoir or this loch behind me. And it's been a tough old cycle. It's about oh, it's about seven o'clock now. It's about twenty minutes until sunset. So I think I might be uh, reaching the summit in the dark, but I've got all the uh, the gear that I need, and I'm also meeting somebody up here who you might know. And I'm just running a wee bit late for them, so I'm going to get cracked on. So I need to find a bivy spot. Don't want to be walking for too long in the dark. You never know, I might get up there before it's totally dark. So I need to get a bike and get these wheels turning and get up here. Right, let's go. Woo. When I said I was running late, I was running really late. I was probably about two or three hours behind schedule at this point and it was another reason for me bringing the bike. I thought it would maybe speed up my progress along the glen and it certainly did, although there were certain parts of the Land Rover track which still required a bit of pushing and huffing and puffing up the hills. But the Land Rover track eventually peters out, or it stops at the second lock and, and it's at this point I had to get my bike gear off and get my hiking gear on and start thinking about heading up the heading up the hill. And it was, yeah, it was starting to get a wee, the shadows were certainly long, in fact the shadows had disappeared and I was fully expecting to be hiking up here in the dark before too long. And the glen that I was in isn't actually the glen of weeping, it's sometimes referred to as the glen of burial and it goes back to when the Caledonians used to bury their dead up here. And that sometimes has a connotation to one of the meanings of the hill I was going up. It's sometimes called Hill of the Weeping, re referring to this glen being the burial glen. Just thought I'd do a piece of camera, <laughs> mainly to try and get my breath back. <laughs> because I've been going at some pace, I've not really stopped to do much filming, so I do apologise, most of it's handheld stuff, but yeah, so I've left, uh, you can see the two, well you might be able to see the two lochins b below me, and I'm in uh, Glen Turret, and at the, nearly at the head of Glen Turret, I'll turn around in a minute, but I've left my bike at the second loch, and I think it's Loch Anuin, which is a green loch, and that really is a green loch, and hopefully you'll see that in the morning, I'll maybe take some pictures. And uh, I've started the ascent, and I'm heading up here, I don't know if you can see in the skyline behind me, there's a wee notch, in the ridge and I'm heading up there and then it's uh, right up to the summit of uh, Ben Ben Honsey or Ben Ahone as it's known by the locals <laughs> and hopefully my my pal will be up there waiting for me and I can see him, I'm, I'm hoping he's got a head torch because <laughs> I think it might be pretty gloomy by the time I get up this bit so I'm going to shut up now because I do really need to get get cracking on but it's, uh, it's lovely, it's nice proper proper adventure today, pushing it our time, but uh, as I said, the head torch might be coming on soon, and uh, <laughs> then the filming will go very grainy. So, uh, enough talking, let's get walking. <laughs> As you can see, by the time I'd reached the ridge, the light was really fading away and there was just this glow left on the western horizon. So it was time to stop and with the light fading, the temperature was dropping so I needed to get some more layers on and it also provided me a chance to get my headlight on, which I was hoping would provide a beacon for my mate at the top of the hill to see that I was coming up. Whew, I hope you can see me. It's now pretty dark. If I swing round this way, I don't know if you'll be able to make it out, I don't know if the camera will pick it out, but uh, just see the last rays of sun starting to disappear over the west there, and it's uh, the Lores group, if you can, you're, you're not, I think it's going to be too far away in the GoPro, but the last hill, or the biggest hill you can see there on the horizon is Ben Lores, and what I can see is this orange glow just across the horizon, it's fantastic, and all around me I can hear the bellowing stags, it's going to be a bit disconcerting tonight, I'm, I'm glad I've got company. Anyway, I think I'm about 150, 200 metres vertically from the top, and it's going to be pretty dark when I get up there. I hope the sky stays clear so I can see stars this time, unlike the last bivvy. That's one of the reasons I'm bivvying again, I want to sleep under the stars. So, Yeah, what an adventure, great fun. So now it's just time to see if, uh, if I can pick out my camping companion. <laughs> he should be up there somewhere, so right. Let's get cracked on. Beautiful, what an evening. My camping companion had been up on the summit for quite some time, a good three or four hours and had 
got his tents up and I was really hoping that I would spot him when I went up the hill. There's the way out there's... No, you maybe can't see it. There he is. That's where I'm headed for. There he is. You can see his torch shining. Uh, I've not got far to go. Just the up welcome there. Sight. <laughs> oh man. I'm nearly there yet. We're nearly there yet. <laughs> ah, we've got adventure. <laughs> so I must admit to feeling relieved when we uh, hooked up in the mountain. It was a big, wide plateau of a hill and yeah, it was pretty dark by this point and as we sauntered up the stars were coming out and we visited the summit before heading down to the campsite where I set about getting my bivvy set up for the night ahead. Right, so, oh, I'll just move this out of the way, you can see my lovely, lovely bed for tonight, hopefully, down there, bivvied up, and there's, there's Ray, and this is the person I am spending the night with, well, <laughs> we're not both fitting in there, <laughs> Ray's, Ray's got, sounds so bad, <laughs> <laughs> he is sleeping over there, but I did warn you, didn't Ray, yes. I said, uh, if, uh, if this doesn't work out tonight, you might wake up with me beside you in the tent, no spooning tonight, <laughs> Well, I don't know, it looks quite cosy that tent now that we're out here, so anyway, so that's it up, we're going to go and, uh, well, I'll turn this off so I'm not shining it in your eyes, going to go and get a bite to eat now, because I am starving. What time did we say? It was about half eight, so we're about quarter, quarter to nine now, um, so it took about two hours to get up here, and I am a bit pooped, to be honest with you, but Ray came and met me, which was a big help, so I followed his headlight up to the top of the uh, top of the hill, and when we turned these lights out, the stars are appearing, aren't they? It looks so great. It should be good. Should be yeah, good. it should some be good. Astro stuff tonight. Do some some of that. So, yeah, if you want to see the sunset, then watch uh, watch Ray's channel. <laughs> You've been up here for how many hours? A few hours. So uh, certainly, the, uh, Ray caught. Actually, I was saying to Ray last night there was a beautiful sunset. I took the dog up a local hill. We'll put some pictures up to snow. Uh, it'll be stunning. So if today's one was anything like that. Uh, I think you were you were in for a treat. But uh, fingers crossed for the morning. Eh, we'll get maybe get a nice sunrise. So, uh, right. Um, Right, food. <laughs> So we're just leaving the uh, the tents and we're going to head up to the summit of the Munro, Ben Honzi or Benny Hone as the locals call it, I think I mentioned that earlier on, and uh, going to try and take some pictures of the stars and see what we get. It's a nice starry night isn't it Ray? That's nice, that's nice. You can see the Milky Way when we've not, when we've not got the head torches on, yeah. you can see the Milky Way so we'll see what happens yeah. in a minute or two. Yeah, you might see some pictures coming up, or you might not. <laughs> let's see, let's see what we do. Anyway, uh, we need to concentrate on where we're going because it's dark, <laughs> like yeah, pitch black. There's no moon, is there? The moon's not out. No, no. There's no moon, which will be good for the stars. So, yeah, let's see what we let's see how we go. Right to the top. It only took a few minutes to reach the summit cairn and we spent a bit of time here taking lots of photographs and what have you. I needed to make up for missing that sunset, but it was glorious and very starry. Ooh. <laughs> well as you can probably see behind me I'm at the summit cairn <laughs> and uh, Ray's had me running about. I decided to go and uh, I don't know if you remember I did a video a few months ago and it wasn't far from here and uh, I think it was entitled uh, Camping Under the Stars and there was another cairn over, not far, maybe a couple of miles from here and I got some nice shots standing on top of it, so trying to replicate that. So Ray's very kindly been pressing the shutters and I've been sort of balancing precariously <laughs> on the summit cairn, trying to keep my head still with the head torch pointing towards the, uh, the gods and the skies. And I don't know, we'll see if they come out, I'm not too sure whether they'll work or not, but it's certainly a starry evening and uh, it's been it's been well worth it. It's a bit breezy up here as you can probably tell, but we're just uh, we're we're Ray's got the tent pitched and we've got the bivvy bags just in the in the lee of the, the wind, so it's a wee bit of shelter which is grand. We're just having a bit of fun playing about with the playing about with some astral photography and so we'll uh, we'll see how they come out and uh, yeah I might put some up on the, the screen now uh, before we head back down to the uh, to the tents and maybe take some pictures of Ray's tent down there. That's the one thing about the bivvy bag. Not very photogenic. <laughs> right, some more photography. Right, here we go. Well, that's us, uh, well, we're about half past, what do you think, about half past ten now? Half ten. 
We've taken some shots. Uh, oh, yeah, I think, I think some of them have come out all right, yeah. I think they're actually really quite good. Uh, I think there's, uh, you know, I think the subject makes it, you know, the, the, <laughs> the human subject. The, the, <laughs> the yellow breeks. <laughs> ah, yeah, they're yeah. Pretty, pretty ordinary shots without the yellow breeks in it. I <laughs> anyway, I had a good bit of fun there, a bit of experimenting and a bit of yeah, playing it about. Was good. Uh, yeah. It was nice not having to run up to the summit myself. Ray was taking the pictures for me, which was great. I didn't have to break an ankle by getting up there within 10, sec <laughs> 10 seconds. <laughs> but it just worked uh, out perfectly. To the Milky Way was more or less coming up with the Cairness. Ah, it was nice, wasn't it? You know, yeah. Uh, yeah and with, with a bit of a. Good. It does look good. We had a bit of a fright, didn't we? Um, yes, yeah, so so the, the moon coming. <laughs> well, we didn't know it was the moon. <laughs> we looked over and it looked, it honestly, it looked like a tent. And I was like, what's that? What the f we've a been talking about aliens. It was like a tent away in the distance or something. It was, and we've been talking about aliens. Yeah. And I, I think for at least, I don't know, 30 seconds, we were both a bit like. What yeah, and what the hell that what, was, uh, what was that? Anyway, um, right, we're going to go back to the uh, back to the camp now, and yeah, probably take a few more shots down there and then hit the hay. So hit the hay. Let's yeah. crack on, will we? Yep, super. Right. After recovering from our extraterrestrial encounter, we headed back down to camp, where we settled down, had a wee a wee natter before heading to bed. Right. Whew, as you can see, that's me in the bivvy. We had a great time just uh, up in the top there, taking photographs of the stars and, and playing about. We had a great time with Ray. Fantastic. Check out his channel, Renegade Scott it's called. So give it, give it a shot and you can see some of the pictures he took as well, which came out absolutely brilliantly. Anyway, th the reason I decided to bivvy tonight was, um, I, as you know, I usually camp and I used to bivvy years ago and I didn't really enjoy it. And if you watched my bivvy up in Bukalet if more a few weeks ago, uh, you, you'll have seen that I quite enjoyed it. But the thing that was missing was I didn't get any stars at night, and I really wanted to bivy when there were stars. And my God, are there stars tonight? There's, the sky's just full of them. You can see the Milky Way, the moon's rising now over over in the east. It's absolutely lovely. So I'm really looking forward to just lying here and gazing up, gazing up at the sky, and hope for a nice, uh, nice sunrise in the morning. We're on, as I said, we're on Ben Honsey, and it's often called a dull hill. Uh, you'll read about that, there's lots of books here, you know, people call it dull and it's not dull and all that sort of stuff, but certainly if you come in from the Glen Turret side, which is the Glen of the Weeping, I think, or the Weeping Glen, I think there's some sort of, uh, I wouldn't say history, but myths and legends that the the uh, Caledonians were, were routed by the Romans and they, they buried the, the dead up in Glen Turret, uh, which... Which gives its it gives its name, and I think one of the other names. There's a few names for Ben Honsey. And one of the other names, not Benny Hone, or there is one name I think which sort of relates to that, the burial and the weeping glen and, and all that sort of stuff. So fascinating stuff. A bit of history up here. Hopefully there's no ghouls and ghosts. <laughs> Although we did get a fright with that moon coming up. It was uh, it really was an optical illusion for a good uh, possibly 30 to 40 seconds. Anyway, we're going to hit the hay now. The alarm's set for six. Sunrise is about seven. So if there's any clouds in the sky come the morning. We might might get a nice uh, sunrise, and then it's uh, up and off back to the back to back to the, the land of normality and running about, giving people lifts here, there, and everywhere. But it's been a great night so far. So, time to hit the hay and gay skyhorse night night. So I lay back and fell into a light sleep, and I woke up lots of times during the night. But it was just lovely every time I woke up and opened my eyes. The the sky was just filled with a million stars. It was fantastic. Well, that's uh, six o'clock. Yeah, I woke up about half an hour ago. So we've got we've got a, a low-lying cloud, or fog in the valley, fog in the valley. And we've got a cloud wisping over the the top of uh, Benny Hoon and. Uh, yeah, I'm just got to struggle to get out of my bed. <laughs> it's cold. It's cold and it looks windy up there. I think when we get to the top, it's only about a two or three minute walk away. But we're on the sheltered side of the hill. And I think when we when we got there for sunrise, it's going to be a bit breezy. But it looks like it's going to be nice though. There's not much cloud I can see in the sky, high in the sky for any pink skies or what have you. But uh, certainly there seems to be a wee, a wee bit of an inversion. So. I mean, I'm going to have to try and pull myself up, get my shoes on, get something to eat, go and take some photographs, watch the sunrise, and uh, get ready for the day ahead. Anyway, I'll report back shortly. 
after procrastinating for quite some time, I eventually pulled myself out of my nice cosy sleeping bag and myself and Ray decided to head up to the summit to see what things were looking like over Persia. And my god, were we happy when we got up to the top. It was looking absolutely stunning. As we approached the summit cairn, which was silhouetted against the dawn skies, the mist was wisping over the summit, really atmospheric. Just probably a good half an hour before the sun was due to rise, and there was this lovely pink and yellow hues, and the cloud was sitting below us across Strathairn, and getting up onto that summit was just lovely. What a place to be. It was a bit breezy, but hey, who cares when the views were like this? Absolutely magical. Oh man, so it's uh, it's now about quarter past six, half past six, and we've taken a wee wander up, haven't we, from our tent? Yeah. Yep. We're not we're not far away from the summit. We're only two or three minutes walk. Yes. Just out to see. I don't know if you'll make it out in the camera, but you're starting to get that dawn glow across the eastern and southern uh, horizon. It's right. It's really really orange at the moment. That's what we're seeing. Whether it'll be the same in the camera, I don't know. And there's this mist just kind of scudding off the summit. It's really, really quite nice. The only thing that's not nice is the wind that's causing, is it, Ray? It's, it's, very, it's very bitter, <laughs> very bitter. But yeah. the cloud inversion as well down below is actually, it's really impressive because when I opened the tent, I wasn't expecting anything like that. It was a, it was a nice surprise to wake ah, up to. Ah, well, I didn't get that surprise. I just opened no, my eyes right. I, every five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, we were both saying we kind of broken night. Well, I had a broken night's sleep. Um, woke up about, I think it was about the last time I woke up was 5.30 and I just, oh, that's when I woke up and I noticed the, the cloud had appeared but through the night it wasn't, it was quite, there was quite a lot of moonlight and you could see right over to the Lords range and there was no cloud at all so this is, ah, it's quite a pleasant surprise, it might, it might provide some nice, a nice, a nice sunrise anyway yeah, yeah lovely, so uh, yeah we're going to, we're going to go and far about and take some pictures and just enjoy it really providing we don't freeze to death before <laughs> the sun comes up it really was fantastic and for the next kind of hour myself and Ray just floated about the summit taking pictures and yeah, just really enjoyed the ambience of being on such a wonderful spot at this time in the morning. Wow, what a view, look at this mist coming in, this is just fabulous, absolutely great. <laughs> And in the daylight, I can see this, this rocky cairn is certainly rocky and uh, <laughs> seems a bit more unstable this morning than it did last night when I was running up and backwards, <laughs> backwards and forwards up here. But yeah, no, there's more light coming now. You see this clouds wisping over, I can see down uh, Loch, Loch Turret and you can see the uh, east and west lowman. There's this blanket of mist and fog in Strathairn. It's just absolutely glorious. The only thing that's missing is a, a wee bit of high level cloud, but you know what? Couldn't, uh, I'm not going to complain, this is just absolutely brilliant, love it, love it. So I've been taking a few snaps, I actually dropped the camera and broke the view, <laughs> broke the view, the viewfinder there, so. Lovely, another, uh, another wee while and the sun will be coming up. And then it'll be time to go and break down camp, but uh, yeah. Who says this is a dull hill, eh? Ben Honsey, when you got views like this and these conditions, it's just brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. And I think we're quite lucky, some of these other hills over here are shrouded in a big blanket of uh, of mist so yeah the, the moment it's kind of coming and going here which is great so yeah night, time to shut up and go and take some pictures Breezy and it's uh, cold fingers at the moment. The sun's up. If I spin round, you might be able to see the sun. It's just peaked up over, probably around about Perth actually. Ah, it's glorious. It's a lovely surprise with this inversion and, and getting above the, the cloud. It's absolutely stunning. It's great stuff. I don't know what the photographs have come out like. I've gone through a battery <laughs> already, dropped the camera, and uh, yeah, I did, I did manage to get some time lapse footage and what have you. This is just beautiful. 
this is uh, this is what it's all about. You know, you come in, you come in, you spend the night in the hill with very little sleep, and you just kind of hope. You kind of hope that when you wake up, you you maybe get some views like this. Anyway, right, I'm going to. Uh, I think the next stop from here is to go down and uh, get in the uh, the bivvy bag away, striking camp, heading back down to the bike, and then uh, back home before night. <laughs> well, I said I'd be home by ten, so I might get extra brownie points when I'm a bit early. Right, let's go. I spent just a little bit more time on the summit gazing across Strathairn at the sun rising above the horizon. It really was great and it was a bit of a pull having to leave the summit as we headed back down. But the, you know what, the views out west, which is the direction the camp was facing, were pretty special too, over to the Lord's range and the cloud was sweeping in. It was coming in from the east so it was breaking up as it got inland. And it was soon time. I got my bivvy away. It was pretty quick to do that. As I said before, one of the major advantages of the bivvy is a lot quicker to break down than taking the tent down and what have you. And I got the sleeping mat away. Did all that. And it was soon time to get a bite to eat and go and see Ray for a quick catch up before heading back down the road. Some view in it, Ray. That's, uh, that's been quite a good morning. I think I've enjoyed that. Uh, yeah, it's been uh, it's been a great day. Uh, oh, no great day. Well, that again, eh? uh, <laughs> a great great eight hours for me or whatever it was when I got up last night. <laughs> Just lovely. So um, yeah, we're as you can see, Ray's still uh, Ray's still here. I've packed away. I've got to get back a bit quicker. Uh, unfortunately, I can't loiter <laughs> like last night as well. And yeah, we've just been enjoying it really with a bit of breakfast there. This this inversion staying, the cloud isn't rising, the sun's up. Ah, it's just glorious. It's, it's been great, Ray. Thank you very much it's, for. Yeah, uh, it's been a tremendous uh, outing. Yeah, uh, yeah. We waited a while for it, but it's been uh, yeah, well worth it. Uh, really, didn't, really didn't expect it to be like this this morning. It's just been tremendous. Yeah, no. That's uh, yeah. It's always it's one of those things. You go to, you go to bed at night and you think, oh, I really hope we wake up above the clouds and. We did today, and uh, well, I just, I just want to thank you for guiding me up the hill last night <laughs> in, in the dark. <laughs> Without that, I'd still be wandering about down there. I think, where the hell am I going? <laughs> but it's lovely. So anyway, I'm going to shut up now. I'm going to get cracked on because I need to get back to the uh, get back to the car. And uh, yeah, until next time, stay safe out there. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. All that remained for me to do now was to head back down the hillside in this glorious day and back to the bike and the cycle along the tur turret. And we'd had a fantastic adventure and I highly recommend Ray's channel, go and check it out. It's called Renegade, Renegade Scott and I'll put a link in the description. What a fab adventure we'd had. Super. I'll be, I'll be looking at this in the ed ed editing suite going, what the f*** are you doing there? Right, here we go. Okay, right, so, um... I <laughs> know. Uh, ah! Right, the camera's with these. Great fun. And I'm looking forward to tonight. One of the reasons that I decided...